Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, we're down here at the bench on a chilly Sunday, going to work on another project. I needed a, uh, an antenna tuner occasionally down here, and uh, rather than carry my uh, antenna tuner from upstairs down, I thought I'd just build my own. And then I thought, you know, that might make an interesting project for a video. Build your own antenna tuner. They're very easy to put together. Parts might be a little tough to source, but uh, the actual tuner itself is easy. And I thought this would be a useful thing for a couple of different reasons. Uh, one for me for here, and two for you to benefit from it. Um, also, I was watching some uh, prepper videos, and a lot of these guys will get the VHF handhelds, and they talk about emergency communications. But they rarely talk about HF. And, uh, you know, if uh, the zombie apocalypse came, local communications within a few miles would be good, but uh, wouldn't you also want to communicate over a distance? And uh, you need a, an HF radio, which are easy to get, but uh, you need an antenna. And to cover a broad range of frequencies, you need an antenna tuner. And I thought, let's see how easy it is to build one. Because in that, that situation, you might have to build your own gear. And so we're going to do a little project here building an L network antenna tuner. Now, what is an L network tuner? Well, let me reposition the camera and I'll show you a diagram. Okay, this is your basic L network antenna tuner. You have your input here from the radio, you have a coil that's tapped with a, a, a tap you can adjust across the coil to vary its inductance. You have a variable capacitor from this end of the coil to ground and finally your antenna connection over here. And What this does is it matches the low impedance of your antenna to a higher impedance uh, antenna or the lower impedance of your transceiver, sorry, to the higher impedance of your antenna like an end fed wire that you just throw up over a tree or some random length dipole so basic, basically it's really really simple. Uh, what do you need for parts? Well you'll need a variable capacitor. I have one here that I used in another project that I'm going to reuse. It's out of an old AM radio. If you find an old AM radio at a junk shop or whatever it's a great source for these uh, variable capacitors and actually the uh, plastic uh, assembly that the tuning uh, cord was around makes a nice non-conductive surface to tune with. And what I did was I uh, put a couple of switches on here because it's two gangs. There's, there's two different caps here tapped there. And uh, I put a couple of switches on it so I could vary the range. I could choose just one, just the other, which is a little bit larger capacitance, or both together. So that'll make it a little more flexible. You don't need to do that. You can just tap one of the gangs or both together if you want double the capacitance um, there. But any variable capacitor you find in an old AM radio is going to work. Values are not too terribly critical. The larger your capacitance, the broader the range of the tuner, but it's still going to work regardless. Then you need a coil that's tapped. I made one. I took a two inch piece of PVC pipe, cut it to about six inches, and every half an inch I drilled a hole and tapped a screw. And then I took some wire and I started wrapping it around and every time I came to a screw I stripped back the insulation on the wire and wrapped it around the screw and then continued on. Stripped back the insulation, wrapped it around the screw and continued on. On down to the end. So I've got taps on each of the winds of the coil. A couple of small holes in the bottom will let me mount it on something. And then I've got a wire with an alligator clip and I'll be able to find the largest or loudest receive noise by doing this and then when I find the right spot just clip it on to tap the coil so that's going to be my tapped coil and then I just need to build it onto a piece of wood or something and for illustration purposes for the video to make it easy to see I got this big old hunk of plastic here and I've mounted a couple of PL or SO239 connectors on there and I'm going to mount the capacitor here, and I'm going to mount the coil here. And we'll wire it all up, and uh, then we'll uh, put a radio on it, hook it up to a random antenna, and I'll uh, show you how it works. Okay, we've got the radio hooked up. Coming into the uh, input side of the tuner. Uh, yeah, right here where the coil is. And you can see I've got my tap. Output side goes to the antenna jack. 
and the capacitor is between there and ground. A note on these variable capacitors, whatever part of it is on the center shaft, um, you want to have that on the ground side. That way you've got less hand capacitance effect when you reach in here to tune your capacitor. And you can hear the static is getting louder when I reach a certain point. Well, I, I need to find the tap first, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen very carefully. I can hear it get louder as I touch the taps. I think that one gets it the loudest, so we'll clip it on there. And that's really subtle, but you want to listen, and you'll hear the static come up just a little bit when you get to the right tap. And then, if I tune the capacitor, now you can hear how the static got a little louder right at that point. Now I'm set to uh, one watt. What I'm going to do is uh, transmit a carrier. Watch the meter. Okay. We're at about two to one. If I tweak the capacitor while I transmit, ah, right there, one to one. So right now I'm tuned up and operating on 40 meters. If I switch bands, we'll go up to 30 meters. I might not have to move the tap, let's see. Yep, right there. I can get down to one to one on 30 meters. Ready contest week. There's a quiet spot. Okay, I gotta get all the way to the end to get the static to come up, so I'm gonna have to move the tap. Let's move it over. Nope, move it further. You wanna find a spot where you've got a range where the static comes up and goes down. Yeah, it's starting to. We're getting close. Let's go down a little bit more. Let's see how we are there. Yep, right there. One to one. Now I'm tuned up for 40 meters. Or 20 meters. As I move up in frequency, I'm going to move down the coil and have less taps to find that spot where I can get the static to come up and come back down. Right there, okay. Yep, there we go. And right there, one to one. So that's how you use the tuner. You find a point on your coil where tuning the capacitor will bring the static up and then back down, up and then back down, so you've got a range to move through. You get it to the loudest point and you're close, you throw out a little bit of a carrier and just tune for the low SWR. So that's how uh, an antenna tuner will work. And it's very easy to build. I overbuilt it here. You could make it much smaller, put it in a box. Um, you could use a multi-position switch to adjust your coil taps. Um, yeah, that's it. It's pretty simple. Let's uh, let's see how uh, how much of an imbalance it can handle. I've got a two meter mag mount antenna, five eighths wave mag mount antenna sitting over there. I'm going to bring its coax over and hook it up, and we're going to see if we can get this tuner to match it on lower HF bands. It wouldn't work very well, but it'll give us a good example of how efficient the tuner is. Hold on. One thing I should mention. Uh, on your variable capacitor, the spacing between the plates is going to dictate how much power you can run. Um, I'm using a QRP radio here, a 5 watt radio. With a capacitor like this that you get out of an AM radio and the plate spacing, you could probably get up to 20, 30 watts, maybe a little bit more. What will happen when you get too high is you'll have a flash over an arc on the plates, which will be very obvious. and, and uh, you don't want that to happen, but if that does happen, you know what your upper limit is. Depending upon the match to the antenna, if the antenna is close enough in resonance that it's taking the load, you might be able to get to a full 100 watts without any flashover on those plates, but you do need to watch that. Definitely you want bigger spacing um, between the capacitor plates for whatever capacitor that you use. 
Okay, I have a 2 meter 5 8 wave antenna hooked up. I'm on 30 meters, no, I'm on 17 meters, 18 megahertz. You hear that? Right there is a static peak, so let's put, let's put out a carrier. Oh yeah, it's a little narrow, but I can tune it right down to 1 to 1 on 17 meters. Let's go down in frequency. We'll go all the way down to 40 meters. This will be a rough one to match. I don't even know if I have enough inductance to do it. Let's find out. No. <laughs> no, we're not going to have enough inductance. Of course, that's asking a lot, 40 meters on a 2 meter antenna. Let's go up to uh, 30. Hmm. Well, maybe. No. No. No, nah, we're just not going to have enough inductance to... Of course, like I said, that's asking an awful lot trying to match uh, 10 megahertz on a 2 meter antenna. What about 20? Oh, looks like we can get to 20. Yeah, right there. Can you, can you see that meter? Oh, I'm in the way. See that come down? Right there. One to one. Uh, the two meter antenna would not be a very efficient radiator, <laughs> but the tuner does allow us to match it. So, there you go. Uh, an L network tuner is very easy to build, doesn't take much time, and it's quite effective. Uh, it's great for long wire antennas, just random end fed wire antennas. You could just throw a wire up at a tree, connect it to that center post and uh, find a, a match on your HF scale and operate. So, thanks for watching. Build yourself an antenna tuner. It's a useful thing to have around. 73.